Hi, welcome to the first episode of Air Chronicles, where we'll be talking about the behind the scenes footage of how we've developed Valkyrie Air. I'm Karush. I'm Ivan. And we're the co founders of Valkyrie Industries. In this series, we're going to talk about our technology, our story, we're going to talk about applications of our technology and value we bring. And we're going to invite different people to talk about fitness, medicine, uh, haptics, and everything immersive. So we started Valkyrie Industries about seven years ago out of an incubator from where we both studied at at Imperial College of London, uh, where we were looking into different fields of immersive technologies and how we could add value to, to those, uh, you know, those areas of virtual augmented reality that was yet a big bubble. Yeah, I was coming from uh, engineering semiconductor background, trying to uh, work on wearables and augment human's perception through technology, whereas you're working on design, so very similar things. And we kind of bonded together from day one and created Valkyrie, I think the name came in three weeks. And since then we roll. We wanted a name that sounded somewhat corporate, ominous, but at the same time had a bit of a fun mythological flair. I think in all my design projects, I've always used some form of, some form of cultural uh, mythology in the past, and this one just ended up being Nordic. We are the, uh, the haptic Valhalla, and we're bringing the mortal people to where you truly experience the digital revolution. The uniqueness of Valkyrie Air is a combi combination of electrical muscle stimulation and virtual reality. So we're, we're combining movement in VR, interaction with virtual objects, with stimulation in your muscles. And that's bringing resistance, load, weight, or some sort of weight of virtual objects in virtual, rea uh, virtual reality. What's really exciting about it to me is that anyone, anywhere can now try it. I mean, we're just at the tip of the iceberg with fitness, but hopefully in these series and with our developers joining this call, you'll start to understand just exactly what different kind of things you can do with a wearable that you know isn't your typical haptic chest vest piece or just a vibration in a controller I mean those alone excite me we did three pivots we've had so many pivots yeah maybe five our journey in the world of startup was not an easy one actually uh, I think day one they told us to build a hardware company is hard and we kind of didn't take that advice so seriously. Though we knew it, uh, there were lots of different uh, decisions that we had to make. Some weren't fun, uh, but you know, to build this business into where we are now, it's, um, it's kind of paid off and you have to search all corners of the world. We started with the idea of augmenting human perception in virtual world and haptics from fingertips to shoulder haptics. That's, that's how we were branding, branding it before. Uh, we had a full suit, essentially, full EMS suit that allowed you to interact with the virtual objects. It was too cumbersome for people, so we moved into just gloves at one point. And we're working for, on gloves for a year, I think, for gloves for operating robots uh, to fix the, uh, to, how do you call them, dispose of the bombs. Bomb disposal. Bomb, bomb disposal robots. Uh, then during pandemic, we went completely into software, completely in different directions. We went into virtual reality sculpting and worked on that for a year and a half. Uh, and after pandemic, on the other side of the pandemic, we moved back into electrical muscle stimulation and back into fitness. There was a lot of pivots on the way. The big takeaway was to focus on one thing, one thing that you're good at. And for us, it was the IP around how we stimulate your muscles to give you the resistance, the load and the fatigue and to find demos, tech demos, uh, software that would really make that shine the best. And for us, it was 
fitness. Think the suit that Ivan is talking about and we'll show you Bifrost in this series. We're quite excited to show you something that hopefully will launch maybe five, ten years down the line. Uh, but Bifrost was way ahead of its time and did require, if not tens of millions of pounds to, of investment to develop. Uh, but that was a very complicated system. And so we took a step back, we had a retro, we realized that the muscle stimulation aspect is what's not been done properly. And for us as two guys starting this business seven years ago, we kind of homed in all the way back from what our original mantra was, was to bring a novel way of how we can feel the virtual world. And that's exactly what Air does. The very first pilot we did with Bifrost, we realized that one size fits all was quite important. And when, you have, when you're developing a jacket, I think the biggest issue was that A, it was modeled of one specific person and we only had one, one prototype. So it's very difficult for other people to experience it in the best light that the person it was modeled after could, uh, was, was developing on it. So being able to create one size fits all and this modularity approach was very important. Getting rid of the seam between different uh, sensors was quite pivotal for us. Uh, and, it, and it was a game changer ultimately. I, th I feel that was the part where we realized that A, we can now test this with so many different people and uh, human-centered design is pretty much a big part of how we developed AIR uh, and it's in our design process, development process almost every, every day. Uh, so making sure that we understand the people who are using this, what the pain points are to to not give people what we think they want, but to actually uh, learn from uh, areas that they, they struggle in using this technology. And they still, they still do. And I think we've got a, a lot of more user-centered design approaches to adopt in our product, but that will come in time. We started from end users. So I think first time when we uh, we spoke with our advisors from F45. Um, we brought them, I think, before we started building anything. So we talked about how people would use it, why would they use it, and looked from like holistic picture on how the uh, our users will experience our device. Then on each step, we were bringing it back. We we're testing it. We we're testing it constantly. So we had several uh, big. Um, procedures with uh, 30 people specifically focusing on on collecting some data on how people use it what they suppose they struggle with what they like uh, what can be improved um, yeah I think the yeah, user testing is kind of the most one of the most important um, things to understand if we're going correct direction and what should we improve and creating a pipeline essentially for next year or so hundreds of people trying them, the majority of them enjoying them. And they think, wow, this is the first, I've never seen anything like that before, or this is the closest to resistance you can get in VR. Something like that, this moment, uh, yeah, very important. I think my proudest moments have been the people trying it. Uh, from CEOs of companies like ASICS or the CTO of uh, Epic Games, um, all the way down to everyday people who try this at conferences, at shows, at public events is a huge game changer when you kind of in a bubble building stuff and strategizing your idea and then yeah, seeing it come to life. Well, thanks for listening. If you've got any questions, feel free to hit us up. Uh, we'd be more than happy to answer and stay tuned to find out more in this series of Air Chronicles. Should I say something like, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button? What's your YouTube channel? My YouTube channel.